So no doubt we've all wondered what would it be like getting Doom on the Evercade. It might still happen yet, but you can probably do this if you really would like to using the Ever SD. Not really a route I'm going to go down personally, but we're going to have a look at it in this video. Guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. Today we're going to be looking at the Ever SD, which is basically a cartridge which you can put into your Evercade and play your own ROMs. Now it sounds simple, but in practice, in some of the videos I've seen, it's not easy at all. So right from the off, I'm going to say, guys, I wouldn't recommend this, but I'm covering this because I think it's something we should probably acknowledge and have a look at um, that's out there. And I really want to discuss it and why I wouldn't waste any time with it. Um, but it is an option for you if you're really interested in playing your own ROMs on the Evercade. Now, the EverSD has been out for some time, it's went through some issues over the year and it's had its own problems as well. And obviously, Blaze don't uh, endorse this, they've obviously tried to block the use of it by updating firmwares etc. But it's always been hacked and it's I think it's always going to be a thing out there and it's there if anybody wants to actually buy it. Now the details of it is, you basically add your own micro SD card into the side of it with your own ROMs, 256 gig micro SD card, you can use it as a development kit as it says here, um, you can put RetroArch on it, you can play all your own ROMs, you can even add in external controllers and use that. Not sure why the heck you would want to do that, but it's an option there. Um, interestingly you can actually use your own wallpaper when selecting a game, which that's actually quite an intriguing um, aspect. Um, but yeah, as I say, Blaze don't actually contone this. What I would actually like Blaze to do is release their own, I mean, I guess they have their own development kits for um, sort of developers out there that are making games for Evercade, but maybe they should sell one of these as their own and condorse it. And I know that's not the route they're going to go down. They're actually trying to obviously push physical media in games, which I get. But to maybe do away with this, they should just come out with their own sort of cartridge, development kit cartridge, and it's there if you want to use it, rather than bothering with this EverSD carry-on, which if you look at some of the videos, it's not straightforward. If you look at some of the details of it, so if you want to buy it, it's 40 euros, which I think is pretty pricey. Um, you might be as well going down and buy your own handheld that specialises in ROMs, which we'll cover in a little minute. You can also buy it with one of these multiplayer hub bundles if you really want to. Now to get it up and running you need to download a number of different files and I think that's where the problem comes in. You can use it with the latest firmware or the older firmware but there's also different patches that you need to use to get it to work as well. And I've seen a lot of issues, people not running things properly, games not running properly and it could be down to the firmware, it could be down to the different formats. And this one's just to be used for the older format by generating your own sort of screen art, for example, and it just seems like a lot of effort if you really want to do that. It's kind of interesting, but I don't know. I'm not really convinced it's worth the effort to go through. The frequently asked questions covers some of the, the aspects of what you can actually use, and it, it's basically from PlayStation 1 downwards. It also lists Wonderswan and PC Engine Turbo graphics, which we don't currently have on the Evercade. Um, it also lists N64, which it says it can play, but it's very slow. Again, I'm not sure this is one of the reasons why you would buy an Evercade, uh, EverSD, sorry, to play N64 games. N64 games are notorious and very difficult to emulate, even on the best sort of handheld devices out there. So for that, I wouldn't recommend going just for that. Um, and if you look further down, it talks about what the file and naming conventions need to be for the files. And that's where it gets a little bit confusing. And if you go further down, it does talk about how to actually include your box art, for example. And I think, I think a lot of people will probably get lost at this point. But if you're into this sort of thing and you're interested in doing it, then by all means it would be your choice to do so. But I've watched a few videos and I would highly recommend anybody if you're interested, check out the videos that are out there on YouTube. 
um, because there are a lot of issues surrounding this and it's not a straightforward process. So guys, I'm not really sure it's worth the effort to go and get this Ever SD. I wouldn't bother. I definitely toyed with it myself about a year ago. Um, and I thought it was intriguing. I was obviously intrigued to what the Evercade could actually run. But I decided against it and I decided to go down the specialised handheld sort of gaming emulators that specialise in adding your own ROMs. And I, I purchased quite a few to be honest. I ended up buying one or two and got a bit carried away. Like the Game Force Chief, for example, was really good. The RG351 MP was really good from Anburn Anburn and it's Honestly, these are dedicated sort of handtails that you can use your own ROMs and it's much easier to use. Some of these um, are a lot cheaper than others, obviously. And I recently purchased the RG552, which is kind of a premium um, next-gen console thing, but it's it's got amazing screen, but it's a little bit pricey. There are different options here, some cheaper models. You can also go onto Amazon and get one maybe for about 40 or £50. It plays up to PlayStation 1 as well, and you might even find it has a better screen than the Evercade itself. Now, I would highly recommend you go down this route rather than bothering with the Ever SD, to be honest. I just don't think it's worth the hassle. I think there's better options out there. Now, we have obviously seen that the Evercade has been, Evercade VS, for example, has been hacked already, and I'm pretty sure we'll see a lot more of that um, over the next year. Much like the PlayStation Classic, for example, where you could put in your own USB stick with RetroArch and sort of have the option to play your own ROMs. I'm sure we'll see more of that, and it's really up to you whether you go down that route. I'm not really sure I want to. I mean, I've got a lot of options out there, like the Super Console X Pro and different handhelds rather than using the Evercade, because the Evercade is all about the physical media, which I get. I'm not really that bothered about physical media myself, but it, that's the route that Blaze have chosen. And I think we should probably respect that and leave it as it is and try our best to support that. And Evercade and Blaze have done a fantastic job over the last year. But I'm just covering this because I think it's an option. If you really want to try it, it's there if you really want to. Personally, I'm not going to bother with it. But again, I think it's worth actually talking about uh, and uh, letting you know it's out there if you really want to try it. Anyway guys, thanks for watching the video. Please like and subscribe and we'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.